In the studio tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the new ThinkPad T14S Gen 4. In my opinion, this is one of the most exciting corporate notebooks on the market from Lenovo. Now, if you followed the channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love the ThinkPads. And our very first review was actually a ThinkPad T14 Gen 1. Last year, we also reviewed the T14 Gen 3 in Ryzen Edition. So this year, I wanted to try the T14S, the slightly slimmer version of the ThinkPad T14. Now, you can buy the T14 and the T14S in both Intel and Ryzen CPU options. But in my opinion, with the way that Intel have stagnated over the last few years, especially with integrated graphics, I'd recommend considering the Ryzen version, like this one here with the T14S. And before we look at the specs of this laptop, I just want to quickly talk about the differences between the T14 and the T14S that we've got here today. Now, you can save yourself a few pounds by buying the T14 version of this laptop. It's slightly heavier, it's slightly bulkier. You get an RJ45 port, slightly more power, but at the expense of obviously weight, and this model gets the USB-C, which I know a lot of people are gonna want for your external graphics cards or for your high-speed storage. But if you're not bothered about the size and you're not bothered about USB 4, that T14 is still an excellent laptop, and you can actually check out our last year's version of the T14, which is very similar to this year's version, apart from the new Horizon chip. So then, onto the specs of this T14S. And as usual with Lenovo, you can actually customize your laptop to your needs. Now, in the model that I've purchased here, I've got the Ryzen 7 7840U, which is an eight core, 16 thread, low voltage CPU. I've also chosen 32 gigabytes of soldered on high speed DDR5 RAM. When you're ordering one of these, it's always soldered on. You cannot upgrade the RAM yourself, so make sure you buy the amount that you need. And then lastly, I've chosen a 512 gigabyte SSD, an inbuilt WAN card for the extra connectivity, and I've chosen the 1200p low powered panel. Now there are a few panel options available. We will talk about that in the display section. Now this package came in at 935 pound in the UK with a discount voucher. And in my opinion, with the three years premium warranty that you get with the ThinkPad line, that's really not a bad price, especially with a corporate machine like this, which has all the military testing to make sure that this is quite a rugged laptop. Looking around the laptop is your usual ThinkPad affair. We've got the soft touch finish all over the top, bottom and palm rest. It feels really luxurious. I love the soft touch feel, but it is a fingerprint and grease magnet. But if you don't mind cleaning it every now and again, it does feel great. We also get a little Lenovo sign and a ThinkPad logo on the lid. And on the ThinkPad logo, as always, the little dot of the eye is actually lit in a nice red and it's flashing when you're in sleep and it's solid when you're actually using the laptop itself. So it's quite nice that you can see the state the laptop's in. The build quality is absolutely rock solid, as you'd expect from the ThinkPad line. Really is feeling absolutely incredible. No creak, no squeak, feels great. And despite feeling this tanky, it's only 1.25 kilograms. So really quite impressive. Ports wise, we get two USB 4 ports, an HDMI 2.1, a USB 4, and a headset jack on the left. So you spin it round to the right, we get a Kensington lock, a USB A, and a smart card reader for the corporate environments. And on the back of the laptop, you'll see we've got a SIM card reader just on the side here. Now, if you do want to use a WAN card, make sure you configure it at the factory, because if you don't configure the WAN card, they don't put the reader in. So you literally, that doesn't even exist without the WAN card option. It is an expensive add-on, so definitely worth it if you know you're gonna want the WAN card in the future. Now, opening the laptop, the hinges are pretty stiff, and it's nice and firm. But the great thing, as with all ThinkPads, is you can pull them back 180 degrees. Now, I do find that useful, especially when I'm standing up, like leaning down over my lateral laptop. But the hinge is definitely nice and sturdy. So once you put it in position, there's not a lot of wobble. So when you're like hammering away on it, there's no screen movement at all. And that's something I do appreciate with a premium laptop. Now, looking at the deck, we've got a nice size touchpad that feels incredibly premium. You glide nicely on there, it tracks well, and the gestures all work perfectly. We get the standard ThinkPad keyboard, and although we have lost some of the travel over the recent years where they're making these laptops thinner and thinner, it's still one of the best laptop keyboards to type on in my personal experience. I really, really enjoy typing on ThinkPad keyboards. And you'll notice in the middle of the keyboard, we still get the track point, and that's something I'm really, really pleased that Lenovo have kept despite making these laptops thinner and more modern. They are keeping that around, and if you start getting yourself used to using this and you're doing a lot of typing, it can save you a lot of time. You're not having to move your hand away from the keyboard to move the cursor around. So it is really is excellent when you get used to it. Now above the keyboard, we get the power button with a built-in fingerprint reader. It works accurately and it does work well, but I do wish the actual button was a little bit larger. We get a nice little status light beside there as well, which lets you know that you're actually on or if you're in sleep. We also got inbuilt speakers that sound like this. 
speaker test of T14S at 50% volume. And 80%. So at least these are upward firing speakers along here, but I have to be honest, they're not the loudest speakers and they sound okay. They'd be fine for a, you know, light use, maybe some YouTube videos. I wouldn't want to be listening to music on them. And then as we move up to the 14 inch screen, there are a number of choices here when you configure your laptop. Now I've chosen the 1200p, 16 by 10, 400 nit low power screen. Now for me personally, I'm interested in battery life, so I want that low power screen. And in my opinion, it's still an excellent panel. Now, it isn't the best for color reproduction, so if you are a photo editor, this might not be for you. But for someone doing general office work, or maybe a bit of 3D work that's not needing the color accuracy, this is a brilliant panel. Now, if you do need that color accuracy, Lenovo do offer a 2880 by 1800 high DPI OLED panel. It's gonna look fantastic. It's gonna have great blacks and really saturated colors, but at the expense of some of the battery life. So that's something you need to take into consideration. Now there is also a very basic base panel that I know the IT administrators out there will love, much cheaper. I wouldn't recommend that though if you're buying this for yourself because it isn't the greatest or brightest panel. Above the screen we get a five megapixel camera which looks like this. And this is a test of the webcam and the microphones on the new T14S Gen 4 laptop. And also included with the webcam is IR facial recognition, which I absolutely love. It logs you in quickly and accurately the second you open your laptop. And then just lastly, above the webcam, we've got the webcam shutter, which is just a quick switch, which actually shuts that webcam off, which gives you a nice little red dot, which shows you that your webcam is disabled for the privacy conscious among us, especially if you're obviously in a corporate environment. Opening up to get inside this actual laptop is incredibly easy. Flip the laptop over and undo the five Phillips screw and prise off the base plate. It's nice and sturdy, but it comes off very easily with a little bit of force. Once inside, you'll notice that the actual 80 mm M.2 is replaceable, but the drive that we've been supplied was pretty slow, about 3,000 read and about 2,700 write. You might wanna upgrade that yourself at a later date. The WAN card is also user upgradable, but if you do not order this with the actual laptop, you won't get the reader, so it's gonna be very difficult to add one yourself. Now the RAM and the Wi-Fi card are all soldered on, so there's literally very little you can do on the insides of this laptop. Now that takes us neatly onto the performance. And despite being a very similar CPU to the 6000 range last year, AMD have given it a really healthy boost in the CPU scores. And that was something that was really lacking on the 6000 range last year. And that's led to some excellent Geekbench 5 single threaded scores and multi threaded scores. This is a nice boost over the T14 we received last year with the higher power budget. When we move to R23, which is a 10 minute long torture test, we've got a great 11,200 points in that test in the performance mode. And that's actually faster than last year's T14. And that had an extra five watts budget. So there's definitely some massive improvements in these new Ryzen chips. And as we move to the gaming performance, and again, these RDNA cards are very impressive for integrated GPUs, leading to some great time spy scores, massively better than anything that Intel has produced in the last four years, and a little bit better than last year's 6000 range. And we got great light esports titles of gameplay. So your Dota, your CSGO, Rocket Leagues, and then games such as Battlebit and Company Heroes and other more modern games that aren't that demanding still play really well on this laptop. So yes, you're not buying this laptop for gaming, but it can do a pretty good job. And that also leads through to productivity, whether you're using Blender or 3D modeling or a bit of light video editing, this RDNA card with eight core 16 thread CPU handles everything really well. Plus you've got that USB 4, so you could put an eGPU in it for even extra power. And with regards to fan noise, on its maximum performance profile, it topped out at about 42 decibels, which if you've ever used a gaming laptop, is absolutely nothing. This laptop runs so quietly, even when you're gaming. And if you drop it down to balanced, it then runs at 17 watts, at only about 40 decibels, which is whisper quiet. And when we run it in the best efficiency mode, although you do lose it down to about 11 watts with the performance on the laptop, the fan doesn't even turn on. So if you're doing something that's very light load, pop it in best efficiency and you don't even hear the fan noise. And with regards to the profiles, I just want to quickly mention that they're actually tied to the Windows Power Profiles. So you don't have any extra software you need to actually change the profiles. You just do it within Windows and choose one of the three configurable options. So with performance out of the way, let's talk about actual battery life and using this laptop. And I have to be honest, it's been absolutely excellent. 
Performance on battery is brilliant. These Ryzen chips really are much better in single core performance this year, which does make it feel much snappier. Yet battery life, although not quite as good as last year, is still excellent. In our usual battery test, streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness, this laptop managed to get 11 hours and 21 minutes before we ran out of power. Still an excellent result. Now not quite as good as last year's, just over 12 hours, but still who's gonna complain at 11 hours of light use? That will get you through most of the day of pretty much office work. And only with heavy use are you gonna deplete the battery faster. And being USB-C, you've obviously got a compact charger that comes with this laptop, but you can also charge it with your monitors or docks PD to make it an easy one cable solution that you can walk into your office, plug in your monitor or plug in your USB-C dock, and you're away. And it fully powers this laptop, it's not fussy, and you can do an amazing amount of work on these Ryzen chips. Okay then, so on to the conclusion, and I think you can pretty much guess I absolutely love this laptop. And most of that is due to the fact that we've got a Ryzen in here. These Ryzen chips are absolutely fantastic. It's not a massive increase in performance this year over last year's Ryzen, which were already good CPUs, but that much needed boost in single core score makes this laptop feel much snappier. And the onboard graphics is truly excellent for most people's everyday needs, especially in an office environment. And now that we've got USB 4 on these laptops, you could put a Thunderbolt dock on here or a high speed of storage. And then this could be your one laptop solution for even heavy work needs. I think the biggest question though when you're buying one of these laptops is do you buy the T14 or do you buy the T14S? Now the T14 is a bit fatter, it's a bit heavier. It doesn't have USB 4, but it has an extra five watts of power on the actual chip that is running on this Ryzen, which can make quite a lot of difference and it has an RJ45 port, which is still used in a lot of corporate environments. So if you don't need that USB 4 and you're not bothered about a bit of weight, save some money and get that T14. But if you want a slightly more premium and lighter laptop with USB 4, this T14S is truly excellent. So that's my thoughts on the ThinkPad T14S Gen 4. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Would you consider one of these for your day-to-day -day use laptops? As always, put your comments down below and I will get back to you. And thank you for watching.